Did we decide on a poll question, Seton, before I get to Pat Forty? Yeah, Dan, we decided to go with uh, college football is currently moving in a good direction or terrible direction. And uh, with that, we bring in Pat Forty, senior writer from Sports Illustrated. We'll start you with the heavy question there. We headed in a good direction or a bad direction? Oh, put me down as terrible. I think this is uh, ca- really catastrophically bad, short-sighted, greedy, uh, ultimately disastrous. But that's kind of par for the course, the course we've been on for a while. Okay, how does this affect the fan? Well, if you're a fan of, say, West Coast football, if you live in California, Oregon, or Washington, congratulations. Enjoy your easy commutes to see your team play in College Park, Maryland, State College, Pennsylvania, (laughs) Scataway, New Jersey. Uh, Cherish those long-held rivalries there. You don't get to play Oregon State or Washington State anymore. You don't get to play Cal or Stanford if you're USC or UCLA. But you do get to play Iowa and Illinois and Nebraska. (laughs) That's what you've always wanted, right? So you get that for the fans. Uh, You're going to probably pay more for tickets. Uh, It's just all around. It's just Your team's going to win less as well. There's that. So it's all good. Um, I guess tell me if you bu- you buy into this. Um, it feels like the schools in the Pac-12 are waiting for other schools to make an announcement. So you're not the bad guy who took down the Pac. If you're the Arizona schools, you want to join the Big 12, but you don't want to leave until Oregon and Washington go to the Big 10. How's that sound? Yeah, I, I think there's definitely an element of that, although we might have pushed past that now to the point of like, oh, who cares? It's all going to collapse. Does it really matter who goes first? Okay. I, I think there's still, there's a reason Oregon, I'm sorry, Air, the Arizona Board of Regents are meeting at 6.30 Pacific today. That's late. That gives Oregon and Washington plenty of time to pull the ripcord in case they want to <laughs> beat them to it and go to the Pac-10 or the Big Ten. So I, I think... Nobody wants that blood on their hands, but there's going to be so much blood in the end that it's not really going to the, the crime scene is going to be so riddled with handprints. Who's going to know who's were first? But are we looking at a Big Ten East and a Big Ten West? Uh, it's entirely possible. You know, we'll see how they're going to work this out. Uh, they're obviously, if you're if Oregon and Washington do go, then you've got four out far west. You know, maybe you're looking at more of a pod sort of system. Uh, as opposed to just two divisions. Mm. The funny thing is, everybody had just gotten rid of divisions. Everybody was just, uh, we don't like divisions. We don't want them. They don't help us with our championship game. They're going to have to go back to some sort of regional delineation. It doesn't make sense. And good luck trying to schedule 18 teams. We're going to be playing games all over the map. Also, now we're hearing Florida State, which I think Florida State has always viewed themselves as bigger and better than the ACC. Clemson views himself probably bigger and better than the ACC. But I don't know how they can get out of their TV deals if they want to go into the SEC or whatever their strategy is going to be. So what do you see with Clemson and Florida State? Yeah, that's that's the big sticking point there. I mean, Florida State all but seceded from the union yesterday. I mean, the, the president, the trustees, <laughs> like, we're out. We don't like it here. We're leaving. Well, where are you going? Where are you going? I don't see the SEC jumping up and down saying, yeah, well, we'll help you break a 12-year grant of rights, 13 years still right now, and get in the middle of that ridiculous legal battle and then bring you in over Florida's dead body. I mean, there's some (laughs) issues there. The Big Ten's going to go to 18. I don't see them, you know, bending over backwards to try to help Florida State in this situation. So I don't know whether that was just a – a temper tantrum they felt like they needed to have, or that's negotiating for an even higher cut of the revenue or what. But I, they say that they can handle the, or figure out a way out of the grant of rights. Let's see it. Pat Forty, uh, senior writer for Sports Illustrated. Uh, that brings us to Notre Dame. Give me the scenario where Notre Dame would be, I don't want to say forced to join the Big Ten, but encouraged to join the Big Ten. Well, they're they're constantly encouraged. I mean, like the Big Ten is, you know, kind of just extended the open invitation. There's a candle in the window lit for Notre Dame at all times. Um, but I don't think any of this would necessarily force their hand. Now, we'll see. They've still got their own uh, negotiations to do and come up with their own media rights. But everything, every sense I have gotten from Notre Dame is that they feel like they're going to end up in a good place. 
uh, and be able to remain independent. Now, if literally the rest of the map falls apart, if the ACC in particular falls apart in short order, that Notre Dame has enough ties there that that could get problematic for them and push them towards the Big Ten. But for now, I still think Notre Dame wants to and can stay put as an independent. But what if you have, and I don't know how many years down the road, but let's say we have the top 50 schools, the revenue schools for football, and they decide that, okay, we're going to have you know, the NFL model, and Notre Dame can't play those teams. Now you're, now you're saying to Notre Dame, you know, these are this schedule is against these teams who are in our conference, in our league. And Notre Dame would be playing Air Force and Army and who else? BC and they they'd run out run out of these quality opponents that we've, you know, grown to love that there's rivalries here. Yeah, no, I mean I mean that's that is the doomsday scenario for them. And now it would take a lot to get to that point. The Big Ten would have to kick members out. The SEC would have to kick members out. And if you talk to them now, I mean, look, everything ends up being negotiable, right? I mean, nobody would have ever thought that USC and UCLA would end up in the Big Ten. So everything can happen. But you talk to those people in those conferences, they're like, man, we do not want to be the people that tell Purdue you have to leave, you know, or tell Mississippi you have to leave. So uh, that is that is down the road a ways. If it does come to that, yes, Notre Dame's out of real estate. They have been painted into a corner and they would have to go. But who knows when that would be? If I gave you Caleb Williams or the field for the Heisman, boy, it's tough to repeat. It's all once, so I'm gonna t- I'm gonna take the field just just on the odds that uh, it's very tough to do. Now I do think he's the best player, um, and I think he's fantastic. I think he's gonna be the number one draft pick, but just on the fact that Archie Griffin stands alone as the only person to ever do it in Heisman history, I'll take the field. The most famous player in college football is not even going to start this year for Texas with Arch Manning. You know, Quinn Hewers, who is listed as one of the top five Heisman candidates, and Arch is just going to – did was this the game plan? Did, did Texas know that Quinn Hewers was going to be their starter, and did Arch know that he wasn't going to start going in his first year? I mean, I think they went into the arrangement when he showed up on campus in January – with a fairly good understanding. Quinn Ewers was the guy, and he would have to be very good to beat him out. And I think Arch's family was just like, fine, we are not in a rush here. If he needs to redshirt, let him redshirt. Mm. You know, this is not – the Mannings are not going into this saying, we need this, this, and this right away. They're like, no. They, I mean, Cooper, his dad, is, uh, I think, almost relieved that he can start his college career without being immediately thrust into that spotlight. If uh, we speak in two weeks – what do you think we're talking about? Uh, we're talking about an 18-team Big Ten. We are talking about a a non-existent Pac-12. Talking about a 16-team Big 12. And almost none of that's actually going to matter because Georgia's probably going to win the national <laughs> When did it change, Pat? When did college football get to and, – and I don't know – When, but I did have a coach say, if we knew as the SEC schools were interested in somebody, we backed away. Um, When Missouri and A and M went to the SEC, that was twelve years ago, I believe. So I don't know when all of a sudden it started to change where things were reshaped. You know, I, I mean, it's funny. You can go back and find realignment spasms and changes going back to the '30s. Probably even before that. So, I mean, it's it's happened periodically throughout time. But 1984, the NCAA loses its contract monopoly on TV. And all of a sudden, everybody can get a TV contract, all the conferences. And then that really started to change the economics Mm -hmm. of everything. And it started to change the allegiances to a degree. And then, obviously, okay, the SEC went to 12, added South Carolina and Arkansas, added a championship game. Then, whoa. Everybody wants a championship game. So that happened. And then I think the big, really big catalyst, Dan, was 2009, 10, 11 in there when the Big 12 got raided and the the Big East was was poached to death. And when it suddenly made sense to people for West Virginia to be in the same conference with Texas Tech, that's when it was like, okay, (laughs) it just doesn't matter. Geography doesn't matter. Nothing matters but how we can make the most TV money. Good to talk to you. Stay busy. (laughs) <laughs> no problem. No danger of that. Thank you. Uh, Pat Forty, Sports Illustrated senior writer.
Yeah, I don't want to be the sky is falling, but I, I do want to give you a heads up. The sky is moving. Maybe not falling, but man, it looks ominous. It just does.